Hi everyone, it's Adam here from Ads Productions, and today I'll be taking a look at what D-Link calls their Smart DIY Security Bundle. Now, for full disclosure, I currently use the My D-Link app on my iPhone, which then allows me to make use of my existing D-Link cameras and sensors that I have set up. So my intention with this video is that it hopefully shows you how easy it is to implement this whole isolated system that I'm about to show you into a pre-existing system, as well as setting it up from scratch if you don't already have one. Hopefully that makes sense. Either way, what you're going to want to make sure you do is first have the My D-Link app installed on your smartphone. Or phone, who even calls them smartphones anymore? So what exactly do you get in the box? Well, to start with, you get the camera itself. It goes by the name of DCS8330LH, Smart Full HD Wi-Fi Camera. This does come with a power cable, and it's not a wireless camera. Just bear in mind that when considering your setup, this is not a wireless camera, so it might restrict where you want to put it. There's also the Smart Door slash Window Sensor, with its model number DCHB112, again, just rolls off the tongue as well as the smart motion sensor, the DCH-B122. As for the technical specs, these are something you should look over and consider to make sure that the formats and the dimensions and other details are suitable for what you're going to be using it for. On the screen now are a few of the key ones. However, please direct yourself to the description of this video to a link to the whole specification page, just so you can read through it and make sure this setup is basically going to do what you need it to do. Okay, so when you get the box home and you want to set it up in a mad rush as quickly as possible, how do you do it? How do you just get it set up and go, go, go? Well, I'm going to tell you. Let's speed through this. First of all, because the camera is going to act like a hub, you need to make sure you power on the camera first. Once you've done that, go to the My D-Link app again on your phone, go to Devices, and click on Add Device. It's then going to say to you, please scan the QR code. You scan the QR code on the camera, and it will take you through a setup wizard. This will enable you to join it to the network. It can take a few minutes per device, but after this, after you press Next, Next, OK, Next, you're going to have the camera enrolled, as well as your makeshift hub. The only thing that I found a bit annoying throughout the whole setup process is similar to what I've said in my other reviews for D-Link. The My D-Link app does seem to be a bit temperamental with loading times being a bit longer than I would have liked them to be. And it just sometimes crashes and doesn't respond how you'd expect it to. But this is an app, so I do expect this to become more stable over the time. But it's just taken a while and still no improvements have been made there. I know the app is a totally different product for D-Link as a whole. I'm dealing with this camera and security setup. The app is like a global one for all the other products. I just feel like it could be polished that little bit more. Also, when it came to setting up the motion sensor, I did have to take the back off, the battery out and back in again for it to register that it was alive and then I was able to set it up. It does tell you that on the instructions, so just bear that in mind. Now to add sensors on top of the hub, you're going to go through exactly the same process. Just add the device, scan the QR code, and follow the wizard. Eventually you'll have your camera and your two sensors configured. Now we can get onto the fun part of actually using the features and seeing what they're all about. Starting off with the camera itself, this does feature the motion object detection. The person detection meaning that it's not going to trigger an alert and a recording every time a fly goes into the into the frame. All it's going to do is say, okay, that's not a human, that's not a human or something we should be worried about, skip, skip, and then all of a sudden, when there's a person figure walks in the view, that's when it will detect it. So it's more of a refined way of capturing a subject. You've also got the sound detection, and you can add this into alerts as well, to say if it's in the garage, and there's a rustling going on or some sort of noise, that's when you can trigger an event or an action to happen. And if you want to record these events to an SD card, you can just pop one in the side, job done. 
The event notification is fairly standard. When there's a problem, it gives you a notification and it gives you a snapshot and or a video clip, which you can then download on a mobile device. So that's really, really useful. And probably the main thing you're gonna be using this camera for is to play back those times where you're not quite sure what went on. You can go to the time in the timeline and there it is. It's very easy to use. There's no training required. Simple. There's also different types of detection, which I'll go into. This is one of the key selling points of this camera. You've also got multi-zone motion detection. So for example, if you have your camera pointing at an area, however, certain parts of the area, like the window, constantly have a tree moving in the background or a dog running into frame or not, you can choose, okay, I'm gonna exclude this zone. The best way to think of it is, think of a front of a house. You don't care what the bricks are doing because they're not gonna move. You wanna put the areas Top left window, top right window, bottom left window, bottom right window. That means in those particular areas, if it sees any movement or not, is when you can set alerts and notifications for. You've then got boundary crossing detection. You can have a frame or a view through the camera and you can draw a line down the middle to say, if somebody walks into this zone or walks out of this zone, then let me know. It's just a way of getting a more refined and a more accurate security system going, meaning that just because someone walks into frame, it might not be a problem. However, if someone walks in that corner or there's a movement up there, then let me know. And finally, you've also got a priority zone. The priority zone is essentially a hotspot that you want to focus the whole attention on. So if you had a frame and there was a sofa and the dog jumped onto the sofa, you don't care about it because it's on the left hand side. That usually happens. No big deal. However, if there's a baby's cot in the bottom right hand corner of the frame and that moves, there's something going on there, obviously you'd want to know about that. So it's a hotspot and a priority zone. All of these different zone detections, to be honest, I'm very, very impressed with because it takes what would otherwise be quite a basic setup. You've got a camera, it records with a sensor and adds that extra element of smart technology for the home. So you can basically say, okay, I want to point it here. I want this particular criteria to be met. I don't want anyone to pass this line. It just adds to the diversity and the dynamic of this product. I am very impressed by it, I must admit. As for the smart door or window sensors, you've obviously got the open and close detection. That's pretty common, so you put it on the certain area of the door. You open the door, you're gonna get an alert saying the door's open. Simple stuff. You've also got a sensor bypass button that allows you to open doors and windows that won't trigger the alerts because you want to say, I'm in the house, don't worry. I know that I'm opening the door because I'm doing it willingly. Easy. There is an addition called the tamper detection. What this means is if you open the back or you take off the sensor from its dock, you're gonna get an alert to say, hold on a minute, something's happening with this sensor. So for example, if you're out of the house and you get a tamper detection, it's either fallen off or someone's tried to take it off of its place. Interesting stuff. These are obviously battery powered for unrestricted placement. That's just what the official guide from D-Link says. But if you think about it, it'll be a bit unrealistic to have a wired sensor on a door. It will just get in the way. So self-explanatory, battery powered for unrestricted placement. You don't need a power outlet. You do obviously need the My D-Link Smart Home Hub, which in this instance, the camera acts as. And then you can have this trigger other cameras along your D-Link setup. So for example, you open the door, it knows that you've opened the door, so activate camera one, camera two, and set the alarm on the hub off, depending on your D-Link environment. For this one though, it will send you an alert and you can power on the camera that you have included. The motion sensor that comes with this, which is the little square device with the ball in the middle, this gets the motion detection alerts to your phone, so you know that in a specific area, such as a hallway, if someone's in there, you'll get the alert. It also has the tamper detection on this, which means if someone tries to take the back off, you'll get an alert to say tamper detection found on the motion sensor. This is basically made to be a trigger for other cameras and smart plugs and sensors and alarms and things like that. So it's just a piece of the puzzle. You can mount it very easily on the wall with the included adhesive strip. It's battery powered for unrestricted placement. Obviously it's gonna look pretty silly if you have a power cable plugged into a motion sensor that's supposed to be portable and be able to put on a roof or on a wall. It does require the D-Link Smart Home Hub, which obviously in this case is the camera. It plays very, very well with Alexa 
and if this then that, meaning that you can say if the motion detector picks up a movement then flick the smart plug on which controls your kettle for example. It's all meant to be bouncing off each other to create your security hub. So what's my overall experience been like with this DIY kit? Well setting it up was a piece of cake. Well, there was a few times where the app would take a little bit longer to load than I would have liked, which is very, very frustrating because the rest of it, the hardware, the way it works together, I can't really fault it. It's just the software seems to let it down time and time again. But hopefully, as time goes on, it will be updated. I then configured motion detection so that whenever motion was detected around the specific area, the front door cameras would start up and start recording. This meant that if anyone went in front of the camera, the motion detector, or the door opened, those two cameras would start recording. So it's a very good way to customize your setup. I really do appreciate the variety of different ways there are to complete your setup. Obviously D-Link want you to buy as many cameras and devices as possible so you can fit into your smart home environment. However, I do feel like this DIY kit is a fantastic introduction into the world of home security because it introduces you to a bit more technical things such as the zone detection and the automation settings, just getting you used to the possibilities that are out there. If someone came to me and said, what starter camera or sensor security kit should I go for? I want it to allow me to add more devices and provide me with multiple storage options. So you can obviously put the SD card in and go to the cloud if you want to. I would be saying this one. It's not that expensive, a very small box, three different devices. It does exactly what you'd expect it to. And I would definitely recommend this as a very strong contender in the security game. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Adam from Ads Productions and I've had a look at the D-Link Smart DIY Security Bundle. If you had any questions about this particular device or devices, please leave them as a comment below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks very much for watching.